Hey guys, this is Billy from Adult Cello, and today we are finishing up this kind of four-part series, learning Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, specifically, not just to learn this beautiful piece, which is a great reason in itself, but to, for me um, to kind of impart what I've learned through my own struggles and through teaching my adult students, how to kind of approach learning a piece like this so that you don't build physical tension into the process. If you haven't downloaded, Go ahead, there's a link below, and there's also links below to parts one through three if you need to play a little catch up, okay? And I, I just have to say it, okay, please subscribe if you haven't done so already so that you don't miss any of these videos. Okay, so moving on. Just to recap what I used to do, I'd sit down, I'd get excited about this melody, and then i just kind of start learning the notes with both hands, with the bow, and, and just sort of plowing through it, and then by the time my next lesson came, or, you know, I had to play with someone, the the parts that are comfortable are pretty comfortable and generally the first part of the song was always way more comfortable because i would just always start at the beginning play through and then get stuck somewhere and then just kind of get myself through it but never really analyzing each piece and each bar by itself and then once i started doing that it just opened up a whole world of comfort and a comprehensive understanding of the piece i'm playing not just i really now feel comfortable where I'm comfortable and the rest of it is uncomfortable. So let's go ahead, we'll just dive right back in. We're at the pickup to bar 17 and we're playing through the end. So what I'm doing today is we're basically gonna take ourselves through the first ending. You'll notice on the sheet music uh, that there is a second ending. We're not gonna touch that today, but that's kind of like my challenge to you is to try to apply the methodology I'm demonstrating in this four-part series and on your own you can work through the second ending it's the material is very similar but it's just a way for you to kind of practice these things on your own so they don't become my tools that you've learned about but they become your tools to use as well okay so let's dive right into 17 it's it's slurred in so we, we're gonna do the pickup to 17 okay with the down bow and we have uh, three eighth notes and the third eighth note is tied to a quarter note so that's you know up to the end of beat five again depending on how you would sing it because this is pop I'm giving you permission to not hold the note all the way out if if you wouldn't sing it like wall to wall <laughs> the entire uh, rhythmic value of each note it, the, because it's pop music I think it's the point is to make it as vocal as possible so whatever you would do with your voice that's how long to make these notes um, so let's just look at 17 we're not going to play the last note of 17 because that's basically in my eyes the pickup to 18 and it's slurred in anyways okay so now here we have shifted we'll have just shifted to a uh, second position with an extension just to remind you okay so we're going to play that C natural the pickup to 17 with uh, first finger on C natural. Okay, so here's pick up to 17 and all of 17 except beat six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now, that's 17. Now, 18 we'll do with the pickup. What I would do here, on the pickup note, just the way I hear it, I'm just gonna share this for a phrasing thing. I've said in the previous parts uh, to this four-part series that I, for me, 18 is like the absolute pinnacle emotion-wise and, and volume-wise. This is like the, the peak of our whole terrain, and then it comes down. So here on 18, I want these two quarter notes which is, you know, the start of 18 and then the second, <laughs> the beats three and four are tied together. So I consider it basically like two quarter notes. I want those to really open up and, and kind of like sing. I don't necessarily want the pickup to 18 to open up. Okay? It's just kind of like opening your present uh, like before Christmas and then Christmas comes and you're like, oh, I already opened it. That wasn't a good idea, you know? So so the pickup is, is still in the vibe of that kind of building momentum of 17 and then 18 once you hit the new note the downbeat of 18 that's when I would start opening up the sound okay and again still in second position here we go okay so here's 
pick up to 18 and the rest of 18. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I want kind of a, a big rainbow shape here if possible. One more time. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Okay, Th this is truly awkward to, to do bar by bar because it, it's so like part of a, a phrase that's building. I think there's a lot of value in doing it because it really works with the coordination, but I think you'll find once we've done this, playing through in, in like at least two bars at a time is actually gonna feel musically less awkward than what we're currently doing. So let's go ahead for 19 and, and 20 because it kind of, like I said, it tapers out. We'll just go ahead and tack 19 on to 18 because that's, I think this is a good example of when you can just go ahead and skip that step of 19 by itself. So here's the pick up to 18, all of 18, all of 19, and basically the start of 20. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And again, here's a really, probably the best example in the whole piece where, you know, the second half of 19, you have a down bow. It's beat four of 19, all of the second pulse. So beat, beat four all the way through beat two of bar 20. And there's almost no way I would ever hold all of that out for the full value of the rhythm, just because if I was singing, I wouldn't sing for that long. So I'm just, whatever I would imagine my voice doing, that's how long I'm gonna hold it. Okay, now let's put 17 through 20 together. I think, again, once now that this is hopefully a little more coordinated, I think it'll be musically a lot, it's gonna like make a lot more sense to just put them all together. So starting with the pick up to 17, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so in part two of this series, when we were do working through this second half of the melody with the left hand only, I mentioned how starting at the second half of bar 20, all the way basically through the first ending, it's gonna be the same rhythm with a similar shift back and forth between first position and third position. So once we get that comfortable, then we can just sort of like plug in this, um, this kind of bowing pattern and, and this kind of shifting pattern in the coordination, it, it's kind of like a two for one deal. So every time you get it once, it's going to, the exact same thing is coming in basically two bars. So looking at 21, pick up to 21, which is basically the second half of 20. Just gonna move up bow with a, a pretty good idea of like a energy crescendo, maybe with bow speed, not too strong. And then I want to, for me, I really, downbeat of 21, I want to sink in. So I'll count off the first three beats of 20, and then we'll come in. One, two, three. Good. And then we'll start down bow, but then it's, you know, just kind of like a very, it's like call and response. You have the answer now where you're, Starting in third position, down bow here in the second half of 22. Ready? One, two, three. And then 24, same thing again. Mirror of the uh, second half of bar 20. So here's 24. One, two, three. At, at 26, what I'm gonna try to do is arrange to finish in the middle part of the bow and probably do a tiny bit of a retake towards the tip. And then for the second half of 26, 
this time I'll start up bow. So just the same way I started 24, the, the second half of 24 and the second half of bar 20. So getting into the first ending, I want to, second half of 26, I want to be up bow. And then so that the first ending, I'm down bow on that. To really get a sense of what I'm talking about, let's go from the second half of 24 to the down bow, like the, the downbeat of the first ending. So I'll count off the start of 24. One, two, three. And that's the, the first ending, okay? So because there's so much similarity in the bowing pattern and just kind of the, the feel, I think it can help to just try to put this together now. So we're gonna go ahead and do the second half of 20 all the way to the first ending okay just to kind of hopefully get the coordination down and get everything really comfortable and tension free but also just to to hear the call and response and and to feel what what the music is going to want from us okay so let's go ahead here's i'll count off the first three beats one two three <laughs> So now let's just look at the first ending. The, the biggest thing here is the shift that happens between you're in first position for all of bar 27 and then you start bar eight. In my version, you're gonna start on third finger in third position. So the goal here is just to really time the bow up so that you have a pretty seamless shift because not only are you shifting from first to third position during the span of one eighth note, but you're also doing a string crossing my little hint or tip that I would use is at the end of 27, you're gonna play that E, and then don't feel the need at the start of 28 to have a, a big sound instantly. So you can kind of, with the bow, you, you get on the string at the right time, and then you can kind of creep into the, into the note and then open up soon. So you don't wanna, it doesn't wanna be a whisper, but it's an easy way so that you don't end up kicking the start of 28 with the bow unnaturally and just having like da 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 you know something because it has to just be very gentle so let's look at 27 and 28 and i guess 29 as well because that's just it comes very naturally after 28 so first ending one two three four five six <laughs> Let's try that again one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great. Okay, so now to just kind of wrap everything up, let's go ahead. We're going to do uh, pick up to 17 all the way through the first ending, and then we're going to do the pick up to 13 all the way through the first ending. 17, as I mentioned in part two of this, 17 is was very convenient for the breaking this up into four equal parts, but it's actually the middle of a phrase. So I think it's even more helpful to start at the pick up to 13. All right, so here's pick up to 17, just to reinforce what we did today. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> You know, 
pretty pretty solidly roughed out okay and let's go ahead and now do pick up to 13 one two three four five <laughs> So there you have it. That's the way I would go about approaching a song like Hallelujah, how to break it down and how to make it very comfortable and tension free. All right. So if you enjoyed doing this with me, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much and see you next week.